Hello, and thank you for joining us for the IDG Corporate Update. Today, I'm joined by John Davies, CEO of Cinead Innovations, a leader in intellectual property commercialization with a mission to transform breakthrough research into globally significant companies. John, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, thanks, Yolanda, and thank you for the opportunity to do this update. Now, Cinead's model is really interesting because you actively seek out university research in specific areas where you've identified a need in the market and then nurture that research into business ventures. Can you give us an overview of Cinead and how this all works? Yeah, for sure. So we've we've got a very, very simple mission inside Cinead. We commercialize globally significant university research. So universities, as we all know, are fantastic at creating new inventions, but they're not so great at turning these inventions into economic value. And that's where Cinead comes in. So we work with our partners to create science-intensive ventures, typically based on emerging chemistries. And we love chemistry because it's typically concerned with the discovery of new matter, more specifically, new compositions of matter that form the basis of strong patent protection and which can be taken to market relatively quickly. So we, inside Cinead, we create three to five ventures every year. We hold our equity in those ventures on the balance sheet of Cinead. And one of the keys to our success is, uh, is that we've managed our downside risk really effectively using non-dilutive funding streams. So capital efficiency is a core part of our business. And we do that in two ways. Firstly, in Cinead, we've been able to access the, uh, the $8.1 billion of Canadian offset funding. That's very hard to access, uh, but we're looking to lock in a non-dilutive income stream of something like $20 million into Cinead in the 23-24 period. And secondly, within the portfolio of ventures, we've been successful at raising innovation grant funding directly into those ventures. And again, that number flexes a little bit, but at the moment we're looking at about 20 million of non-dilutive capital into those ventures over the next 12 to 15 months. So the end result of all of this is that every time we stand up a new venture, we're able to stretch the risk capital, our, our shareholder funds, by five to 10 times. And there's not many businesses in the world that can say that. Switching gears to your ventures, one of your portfolio companies is Gemina Labs, which is using patented chemistry to fundamentally change point of care diagnostic technology. Can you share an update on Gemina and what they've achieved so far? Yeah, I mean, Gemina has gone fantastically well. Uh, so it's a business that we built on a chemistry platform for point of care diagnostics. It's really the first new chemistry for lateral flow assays in 40 years. And it's got a massive potential to make very positive changes in the point of care diagnostic space, especially in global healthcare equity and the democratization of diagnosis. So Last month, Gemina announced that its chemistry radically reduced the antibodies required to make a lateral uh, flow assay by about 75%. That is an astonishing scientific achievement. It's got huge implications for the cost of bringing new point-of-care diagnostic tests to market. And just yesterday, Gemina announced its first molecular diagnostic test. This is a saliva-based test for TB. And TB is a huge public health challenge in countries like India, where something like 40% of TB cases just go undiagnosed. So it's amazing, I think, how quickly we've been able to accelerate Gemina. In just three years, we've proven out the technology platform. We got our regulatory approval for Gemina's first product. We've listed Gemina and within Gemina built a pipeline of successor products in respiratory medicine. The management team, uh, led by Brian Firth, is absolutely world-class. Brian's just closed a funding round into Gemina, which closed above market, which again is a, is a great achievement for a small cap bioscience company in this market. Several of your other ventures have also been sharing exciting news over the past few months. Could you give us a few highlights? Yeah, we're seeing really good performance right across the portfolio at the moment. Uh, 3RC is our nickel processing company. Uh, it's proved out its uh, approach to sustainable nickel extraction. It's got fantastic recovery results. We're seeing 75% nickel recovery rates, 100% cobalt recovery rates. Implemented at scale, this is a platform that's got the potential to completely transform the way we extract nickel from uh, nickel laterites. And the big thing here is CapEx reduction of some, something like 80 to 90% over today's conventional techniques. So that that one is going really, really well. 
Uh, Patronus is a dual use materials discovery company uh, that develops materials, advanced materials with both defense and civilian applications. Uh, Patronus has just appointed uh, General Giles Hill as CEO. Giles has an extraordinary uh, career. He served uh, for 35 years in the British Army, joining as a private into the Parachute Regiment in the UK. Uh, he rose through the ranks to become Deputy Commander of NATO Forces in Afghanistan, Assistant Chief of Defence Staff, and very unusually, he also served as Deputy Commander of the uh, US 82nd Airborne Division. So he's a massively experienced leader uh, with uh, with experience on both sides of the Atlantic. We're very, very pleased to have, uh, to have uh, recruited Giles. Um, and we've also just made our, our first investment in a UK business, that's Oxygen. Uh, that's the, uh, the brainchild of Professor Steve Davis. Uh, Steve was the uh, former head of, of chemistry at Oxford University. He's one of the most respected organic chemists in the world and incredible entrepreneurial record. So we're expecting great, great things in oxygen. I understand you're also working on a financing right now. Can you give us an update on that and what's coming up for Cinead? Yeah, so in terms of the financing, we started a Series A round and that's been going well. Uh, at uh, IDG's invitation, we were in Dubai at the end of March, and that was really, really nice event to attend. Uh, subsequent to that, we've hit our first close target, and uh, we remain very committed to working with family offices and other long-term uh, sources of patient capital. Um, and then more generally, within the pipeline of uh, what we're looking at in terms of the pipeline new opportunities uh, for the portfolio, uh, it's looking very good. We're interested in building around our expertise in electrochemistry and energy materials. And there are several exceptional candidates in the pipeline right now that fall into that category. Uh, we're also looking to draw on our existing experience of uh, peptide and enzymatic chemistries uh, to explore new ways of producing useful uh, materials. So it's not impossible to think that materials that we rely on today that come from fossil fuel refineries in the future will be made by processes that mimic nature. And that, we think that's a huge underexplored opportunity in that area. Very exciting. Well, thank you so much for this update today, John. How can people get in touch if they would like more information? Uh, well, the website's pretty comprehensive, uh, cineadinnovations.com uh, or uh, email directly, john.davis at cineadinnovations.com. Sounds good. Thank you again, John. Pleasure. Thanks, Yolanda. Thanks, Yolanda.